In this presentation, we will take a look at partnership liquidation where there is a gain on sale of assets at the point of liquidation. Although a liquidation process, the closing of a partnership doesn't happen all that often, it is very important and useful for us to look at that liquidation process because it helps us focus in on that area which is different from a partnership to other types of organizations, that being the capital accounts. How would we allocate this information to the capital accounts? And it helps us to see that allocation method when we uh, close out the partnership. Helps us to see the, the focus as well on the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. We here focusing in specifically on equity because equity includes now three partners who own the partnership. So if we go through this, we're going to say that first there's a 3 to one profit sharing and we're going to sell for 700000 of cash. Sell all the assets for 700000 in cash. First thing we need to do is say what does that mean 3 to one profit sharing. Uh, and if we don't know that, we can't move forward and oftentimes this is how this will be represented in agreements as well as in textbooks. So what we do is all we have to do is say this 3 plus the 2 plus the 1 uh, is, is going to be the 6 that we're going to take is total. So we'll obviously start with 3 plus 2 plus 1 is going to be the total of 6. And we're just going to say then the one partner has 3 over the total of 6 or 50%. Another partner has 2 over the total of 6 or 33.333. .333. And note that this being a repeated number is one reason we don't just use the percentages. We can't just say it's 33.33 really. What we need is the ratio in this case because it's a bit more specific. So what this is giving us is a ratio type of analysis. And then we've got the 1 over 6, which would give us uh, the 0.333. Let's do that one more time. Then we've got the 1 over the 6, and that would give us the 0.1666. So those are going to be our numbers here. Now, if we put that into our table, we're going to say that uh, capital for uh, K's capital is 50%, C about 33.33, so that we can get an idea. Uh, it, it would be a ratio. We can also represent it as the ratio of 2 over 6 or simplify that ratio. And then uh, for M, we're going to have 16.67 about. Now we're showing what the company has at this point in time. So this is kind of like a, a little trial balance that we have here that we're representing in table format. Note when you look at partnership problems, it'll often be in terms of a table, whereas it's really nice to see the uh, trial balance. And we will look at the trial balance here for one, because the trial balance will tell us a lot more about the story. And two, uh, it's useful for us to be recording this stuff and seeing how things will be uh, entered and reduced down to ultimately zero with journal entries, at least for someone like me who deals with journal entries a lot. So the table is useful, but it's often uh, going to group things together and shorten things up. And you're often going to have, um, especially in book problems, tables that are going to group things together when, when we have the table. But we'll look at, at this in two different ways so we can get a bigger picture and a fuller idea of what we're talking about here. So. We're saying that the cash is 182,500. We got the inventory, 530,000. We've got the accounts payable, a liability of 240,000. And that's all we're going to basically be dealing with. The rest is going to be the capital account. So if we were to, to uh, say assets minus liabilities, our accounting equation then would be 182,500 plus the 530,000 minus the liabilities of 240,000 gives us 472.5, which should be the sum of these three. So if we added up these three, remember that number, it should be 93,000 plus 212,500 plus 167, uh, 272.5. So this is in essence our trial balance and table format. Then we're gonna go ahead and say we're selling the assets for this 700,000, meaning our asset here, which is gonna show assets with inventory. That's gonna be our, our only assets for an example. And so if we sell that, what's gonna happen? Cash is gonna go up by the 700,000 and inventory uh, is gonna go down. Note we sold the inventory for more than what was on the books for. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Probably probably happens more that, more that it will sell it for less. We'll see another example later where we have, uh, we sell it for less. But the point is that whatever the inventory is, we're not gonna get the same amount of cash for it. And whatever that difference is, we're then gonna have to allocate to 
the capital accounts. So we're going to say that the difference here, we had 700,000 that we got minus the 530,000, a gain of 170,000 times 0.5 gives us the 85,000 here. So if we take that one 170,000 times 0.333333333, That'll give us uh, 56,666 here, and so on. If we take the, the same gain, we'll get the 28,333. Uh, so if we look at this in terms of a table, remember this is the accounting equation. So 700,000 minus uh, 530,000 is that 170, and that should match what we did over here on the equity side, which is 85,000 plus 56,667 plus 28,333, 170. Okay, so then we're going to say the balance then, if we bring this down, cash went from 182,500 up by 700 to 882,500. Inventory goes from 530 down by 532 to zero. We still have the accounts payable, bringing that down still at 240,000. K's capital account was at uh, 93,000. It's going up by 85,000 to 178,000. C's capital was at 112,500. Goes up by 56,667 to uh, 269, 167. M's account was at 167,000. Goes up by 28,333 to 195,333. Now we're gonna take that money, we're gonna pay off the liabilities. We wanna make sure that we do it in this order so that uh, we don't end up having a problem at the end. Meaning, we should first, when liquidating the company, we should uh, sell the assets first, then pay off the liabilities, and then pay the owners here. Uh, if we start to pay the owners before that time, it's quite possible that uh, we pay them too much, <laughs> and then we don't have enough money to pay off the liabilities, and someone uh, gets their problems happen at that point. So uh, if we're, we're responsible for liquidating properly, we want to make sure to sell the assets first, pay off whoever the, 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 they owe in terms of a partnership, and then pay off uh, the capital accounts at the end. So if we pay the liabilities, we had 240,000 of payables. We're gonna pay it with 240,000 from the cash that we just got, bringing that balance down and then we're gonna to have to allocate that we don't have to allocate that so it, <laughs> cash went down and accounts payable went down no effect on the capital accounts here so then we're gonna bring the balance cash was at 100 going down by four two hundred and forty thousand to six hundred and forty two thousand five hundred inventory uh, gone so the accounts payable is going from two hundred forty thousand down by two hundred forty thousand to zero and then the capital accounts are just being pulled down. There's nothing happened here. Stays at the 178,000 for K, stays at the 269, 167 for C, stays at the 195, 333 for M. Then we got the distributed, distribute cash to the owners. Now all we have left, note, is cash and the capital accounts. Now we can distribute to the owners and not have to worry about distributing too much and not having enough to then pay off any kind of liabilities that are still owed by the company. So to do that, we're going to uh, reduce cash, pay off K's capital, C and M, and now we're finally fully um, liquidated. So that's the liquidation process in a table format. You can think of it in terms of an accounting equation format as well. We're gonna see it in terms of a trial balance now. So here's our same table up top and see how we mirror this table in terms of journal entries. It's really important and useful to see the journal entries because it helps us, one, just know the journal entries, and two, it gives us just a better idea of what is actually happening in terms of the financial statements. So we have a really basic trial balance here just to show the same information. We have the same uh, cash of 180. We've got the inventory of the 530. We've got the accounts payable of 240, and then KC and M, KC and M capital accounts. We're now going to close out this process with a series of journal entries similar to our activities here. First selling the inventory uh, and, and then we'll pay off the liabilities and then we'll finally pay off the capital accounts. Again, it needs to be in that order. If not, we run into problems. It could, we, we could, for example, um, if 
C demanded to get paid their 212 500 cash right now, and then we sold the inventory and we didn't get 530 for it, then K and M are going to be in a situation where they're not going to get as much money as, the, as they should. And so to do this properly, to be fair to all partners as well as liabilities to outside people outside the partnership, we want to sell the assets first, then pay the liabilities, then pay the owners. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say we got this cash for selling the assets. So we got 700000 Cash is going to go up. It's a debit balance account. We're going to increase it, doing the same thing to it, another debit. We're going to credit the inventory account for what's on the books, 530000 and the difference then in this case is a gain. So the 700,000 minus the 530 is the 7,170,000. $7, Note that um, the, the difference may not be a gain, it may be a loss, but it's almost never gonna be the same what we sold the inventory for as what it's on the books for. And that's one of the major problems. If it's inventory, uh, it could also be equipment that's on the books. And oftentimes, again, it might be on the books for something far different than what we sell it for. So we have to sell it to know what the actual market value is, how much cash we actually have. So then to post this, we're gonna say that cash is gonna go from 182,500 up by 700,000 to 882,500. The inventory is gonna go from 530,000 down by 530,000 to zero. And then we've got this gain, we're gonna be down here on in the income statement, going up by 700, 170,000. So there's our gain, here's what we have. Now we have an income statement amount here and we have to, you know, we have to take care of that income statement account. We can't close anything out if the income statement's still open. We can't liquidate without closing. In other words, we got to close out the income statement to the capital accounts. And we'll do that with our closing type of journal entry. We'll do that uh, in accordance with the uh, profit sharing agreement. So that's what we'll do now. We'll say that the gain here is a credit. We need to do the opposite thing to it, a debit. And then we're going to allocate it to our owners in accordance with their profit sharing. 50, 33, 16.67. So we're going to take this 170 times 0.5. That's going to go to uh, K's capital account. We're going to take the 170 times 0.33333. That's going to go to uh, C's capital account and so on and so forth. So we've got K's capital account going up by 85,000. We've got C's capital account going up by 56,667 and M28333. These three then adding up to the gain here. If we post this out then, the gain's gonna go from 170,000 credit down by 170,000 debit to zero. We've got K's capital account starting at 93,000 credit going to go up by 85,000 credit to uh, 178,000. So after this sale, of course, the, the owners now are going to be attributed more money because we sold it for more than was expected, more than was on the books. Then we're going to say C capital account goes from 212,500 up by 56,667 to 269,167. M's capital account goes from 167,000 up by 28,333 to a balance of 195,333. So here's going to be our balance now. Now the income statement accounts are all back to zero. We basically have a post-closing trial balance again, and we have a very uh, few amount of accounts. We've got the cash, we've got the payables. We want to be left with at the end of this before we liquidate, before we do the final step with just cash and the capital accounts. So therefore, next step, we pay off the liabilities. So we're gonna do that here. We've got the 240,000 credit. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, debiting it to make it go down to zero, and we're gonna pay it off, of course, with cash. So cash is gonna go down. This will be our journal entry to, to pay off the payable. So let's post that out then. We're gonna say the accounts payable had 240,000 credit. We're gonna make it go down by 240,000 with a debit to zero and then the cash account has 882,500 we're going to make it go down with a credit of 240,000 to uh, 642,500 that leaves us when then with just cash and the capital accounts and of course the capital accounts 
should add up to the cash, meaning uh, the three capital accounts here, 178,000 plus 269, 167 plus 195, 333, adds up to the cash balance. Note that these three will not necessarily, and almost certainly not, line up to the profit sharing, the 50, the 33, the 16. Uh, and that's because this really only has to do with profit sharing. And the things that are involved in the capital accounts also include investments and withdrawals. So these will almost never line up to the profit sharing, although the profit sharing is used to allocate net income a component of the capital accounts. Now that we have that, it's easy to finish this up. We're just gonna say, okay, well now I'm just gonna pay out the cash and we're gonna pay it in accordance with what is owed uh, given by the capital accounts left. So we're gonna say that the capital account uh, goes down here for K, it's got 178,000. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, a debit. We're gonna do the same for C. We're gonna make it go down by whatever's in it, which is 269, 167. It goes down to zero. And then we've got M's capital account of the uh, 195, 333 going down by the 195, 333 to zero. And then the cash that we're gonna pay out, we've got the cash account here, add the debit, we're gonna pay it all out because we're paying it all out to the owners in the liquidation process, bringing it to zero. So that's finally where we're at the last step where we have finally liquidated the partnership. If we can go through that series of journal entries, it really helps us to understand what the partnership is, what it looks like, the relationship between assets, liabilities, and equity, and what the actual uh, capital accounts mean and stand for uh, as we go through the, this process and as we think about those capital accounts in terms of any normal operating partnership.